What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Soul Keep content today. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning, so come by and say hello. This video is also brought to you by two different things. Since we don't do any sponsorships here on the channel, I'll go ahead and show them out real quick. The first is my music, which is available anywhere you stream your music. It is under the name After Sound, of course. And the second is a new podcast I just launched on my YouTube music channel called Chasing Infinity. So check it out. It is myself and ChatGPT as my AI co-host. We dive into a bunch of different topics. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Links are in the description below, and I appreciate the support. Okay, guys, let's get into the five biggest takeaways from the downhaul with Double Coconut that happened on September 26, 2024. As you can see here, I have five items and a couple of bonus items. Now, I'll be honest. I mean, I haven't been playing this game at all lately, so I, if, if I'm not understanding something correctly, forgive me and please let me know in the comments. Uh, but this it's something that I still am very excited for and I'll explain to you as we, we go along, right? So here, the, it's not a summary. Uh, there was probably a lot more discussed and there's probably stuff that I won't even get into just because I didn't remember it or it didn't stick out to me, but these are just the five things that I took away from the down hall. So number one, they do have some launches coming up and they mentioned like Discord and Telegram and really trying to get into uh, niche Web3 spaces or, you know, like, um, well, not niche Web3 spaces, but just like, you know, Telegram, uh, there's like all these like little mini games blowing up on Telegram. I think Discord is kind of the same thing. So they're targeting that, but they also have a heavy focus on the Web2 space, right? They want to launch and they're planning to launch uh, mobile, a, a free to play mobile app and version of the game. And then of course have the, um, the Web3 version where people can jump into. Now I'm still still bullish on this aspect. And I know that, you know, they, their games are quite popular. I've played a couple of them before and I'm talking about the, the web two games, right? So in my opinion, what they're trying to do is just create a fun game, a fun experience without the hassle of having to worry about any web three, which is kind of where Splinter Lens is trying to go. Um, and I think that they can actually be quite effective at it. They're, they're essentially taking a Web3 game, and I, I hate to use the term, but like dumbing it down, right? Stripping away a lot of the Web3 elements to make it just a fun game for people to play. But that could potentially lead them to explore the Web3 option. There's another game that's doing this fantastically, and I do cover it from time to time on the channel, and that's Parallel. Parallel is completely free to play. They've had so much uh, and tremendous success in getting Hearthstone players, right, or people who, who are play classic TCGs or Web2 uh, TCGs, they're having so much success in getting people to come in because you don't need NFTs. You don't need to learn about this stuff. But as they do, as they come in, as they learn the game, as they learn the space, they start to immerse themselves more in the Web3 elements. Oh, okay. Owning the card as an NFT isn't too bad, right? What does the token do? Blah, blah, blah. So, I am very excited for them to, you know, expand on this. And I wonder if they've just been waiting for the bull run to get in full gear. Uh, or, I mean, I, I don't really know how, <laughs> I don't really know the, the inner workings of their, uh, you know, their company and their policies. But um, my, my guess is that if they, they're working on something, it would probably be best timed if you can do it with a raging bull market, right? Because then everybody gets super excited. Uh, and we know, we know that they have significant contacts when it comes to, uh, you know, PR and getting the word out there. So that's, that's a reason why I remain very bullish on this game. Now, I, I think that this is a game that could potentially have like, you know, if they, if they market it as a true web two game, this is a game that could actually have millions of players. But here's the thing, they'd all be playing a web two version of the game. But I'll tell you this, if we if we get hundreds of thousands or even millions of players that are playing the web two version of this game, and they see somewhere along, along, along the lines like, oh, it's like in partnership with Splinterlands, and you can go and get the web three stuff within Splinterlands that could still bring a ton of people into the ecosystem for this game, but that could help SPS, that could help, you know, the DAO, that could help everything. Um, so I'm very excited about that. They seem to be still very much focused on it. And, you know, throughout this time, uh, they, they've been, it seems as though, and they didn't say it this way. I'm just, I'm kind of phrasing it this way. Like, it seems like it's just like an open alpha or open beta, right? They're just trying to get the game into a place where they can add more levels in the future and create it and balance it so that it actually becomes a fun, playable game for people that don't care about rewards. And once they can get there, that's when they, you know, they mass market it to uh, all the folks. So that's, that's, uh, that's number one. Number two, just for people who want to, uh, are tracking this so far, they've burned almost 1 million DEC. Now that's not a lot. I mean, this game has been out for what, a couple months at least. So it's, it's not making a huge dent in the ecosystem. That being said, it is there. 
it is, uh, you know, the, for people that are participating in the uh, in the marketplace, right? So every time you you buy or sell, there is DEC getting burned for that too, which is not part of this one million, right? Um, so any kind of traction, any kind of, you know, thing that they're offering to me, it's still a value add. Now, a lot of folks are saying, well, you know, there it's 1 million SPS per month. It's 33,000 SPS per day and it's going to them, uh, you know, and, and it's just, where's the value add, right? Um, and specifically you'll see in the next, uh, point, um, is like SPS staking, SPS staking should be a requirement. Well, um, actually let's, let's, uh, let's even jump into that now. So number two and three, we'll do together. The SPS staking, they're talking about potentially coming to the higher leagues, what they're trying to do, and this actually goes back to number one, what they're trying to do is just make a fun game, right? And they want to remove as many gates as possible, right? Owning the cards in order to earn or even owning SPS and having to deal with that. They're just trying to make it very easy to onboard people into a brand new game, have them understand how it works, have them get addicted to the feedback loop of like playing the game. And then, you know, from there, it's like, if you want to participate in the Web3 uh, elements of this, you absolutely can. So, you know, SPS staking, they did discuss may come in at higher leagues, especially the ones where you can earn significantly more. So I do hope that that comes into play just because I know a lot of people have been complaining about the rewards distribution. Um, but, you know, that's that's kind of where things are. Again, no, nothing is set in stone. All of this is like a huge maybe. Um, and, you know, at, at the, the rate in which we are getting updates from the team, uh, and I mean, in, in this kind of like town hall format, uh, it's just, it's, you know, we're, like I have no idea what to even expect or when to even expect another one of these. Uh, but that being said, if you do follow them in the Splinterlands Discord, they are making consistent updates to the game. They're trying to squash any bugs. They're trying to squash any uh, exploits and such, right? They're, they're working through all these things. And, you know, it, it, it's it's just a work in progress, I suppose. Like I said, open, open beta, open alpha, whatever you want to call it. Um, they also mentioned, number four here, uh, cosmetics and rewards are an option for the future. So somebody asked, you know, are, is there an option, like, are you ever going to have reward cards like Splinterlands? Um, and so, again, this is stuff that they're thinking long term in the future, because I, I believe there's like, what, 10 levels? And right now they're trying to balance those 10 levels appropriately and then start focusing on what the next 10 levels are. I don't know what the number is, but what the next set of levels will look like when those come out. And those could have, you know, different types of rewards, different types of cosmetics. Again, I, you know, what, what I implore with this, um, and I'll, I'll, maybe I'll expand more on the end, but like what I implore with this is like, there's a lot of ideas out there, like even the player versus player. And uh, he even mentioned something that I was super excited about. Uh, early, early on, which is like user generated content. So users are able to come in and create their own levels. And then if people want to participate, maybe they have to pay like one DEC and a portion of that DEC goes to you, right? Which is kind of cool because then you get you get people coming in and just sandboxing the entire thing. They, they play, create levels, send them to their friends. If the levels are hard or fun or whatever, like, you, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's really exciting where it could go. But the issue is that it's still all conceptual. So What's exciting to me is the fact that it's that that vision is still there. Uh, you know, obviously the, the game has been scaled down dramatically, but um, I, you know, and I could be wrong about this. Uh, so I reserve the right to be absolutely wrong about this. But Double Coconut does have a track record of creating really fun games in the Web2 space. And so this is what I'm trying to say about imploring you guys to allow them, right? Allow them that time to figure this out in the Web2 space, create it so they can onboard hundreds, thousands, millions of players, right? Again, into the Web2 version of this. And I would be shocked. I would be shocked if you don't get some carryover that want to, uh, you know, explore what else is in, uh, you know, or sorry, explore the Web3 aspect of it. So, you know, all, all these things kind of put together, that's that's kind of my probably, I guess, biggest takeaway from this if I'm going to combine everything. Uh, the last one that we'll just touch on briefly here is soul boxes. They did show that uh, a sample of like what soul boxes would look like. Again, I mean, you can go in and pay DEC and you get a bunch of souls. It's, it's cool. It's, uh, you know, uh, David, the CEO mentioned that, you know, they don't want to create it as um, something where you can just pay your way to the top, uh, but they, they want it just to be fun. If people want to come in and essentially like roll the dice or, you know, play the slots or whatever, it's going to change every day. But that's currently in QA and it's something that is going to be coming uh, probably in the, the near future. Now, the important thing with this is I think it's going to provide a way for them to monetize, right? And before people like scream like, oh, company is greedy, blah, blah, blah. Like you have to understand th these games need monetization, right? They need to be sustainable. Uh, right now, the way that they're doing it is everything, every ticket that's purchased, I believe the, the current agreement is they burn half the DEC and they keep the other half for, um, 
they keep the other half for uh, what's that called? Their, their company profit. So if they've if they've burned one million DEC, that means that they've earned maybe roughly one million DEC. And at peg, that's a thousand dollars, right? And we're not even at peg, so it's like eight hundred dollars. So is that enough, like to run a studio? A- absolutely not. So obviously, I'm not saying that there. I have no idea what their financial situation is, and I'm not even going to speculate on that. I don't think that it's an issue. Uh, I think that they're still just in the very early stages of getting the game into a place where they like it, so that they can mass market it out to uh, you know the Web two space. Um, so that's that's kind of like where the five biggest takeaways are for me. If we let's let's jump into the bonus ones too. Just I, I had a bunch, and so on. it's not like. <laughs> uh, they're working through exploits. I I wish that I could say more on this, but uh, because I know that this is probably the hottest topic here, b- but it's just like they're, they're working through a lot of the exploits. Uh, you know, they're taking a lot of feedback in terms of like how the rewards are distributed. I I personally don't think that the rewards, you know, like a single person getting the entire bucket in level nine is necessarily a bad thing. I know, I know that's controversial, hot take, but it's like anybody can get there if they want to. It's just that nobody did. So why, why, you know, uh, punish this person for actually playing the damn game in order to make it up there, right? Like, it's just, they took advantage of the situation um, and there was nothing wrong. I don't mean like taking advantage in like a way that's detracting from everybody else. It's just, they took advantage of the situation, right? They acted when nobody else did. So I personally don't see anything wrong with that. Maybe I'm not understanding the situation correctly. So please let me know if that's the case. Uh, but I personally don't see an issue with that, although they are going to look at, you know, exploits, if you can consider that an exploit, and any other exploits that come in. But they have been doing, uh, from my understanding, a good job of shutting things down, right? There was like the delegation exploit, there was a bunch of other things, right? Tournaments and all that. So um, it seems like they're working through that. For people that want to know how many how many employees are working on the game, it sounds like seven to eight. That includes like their engineers, a project manager, or their creatives, right? It's it's like a floating number because uh, you know there's other games obviously that the studio works on. So I, I imagine some of these folks go back and forth and are are working on multiple projects or multiple games. And then lastly, uh, they did reiterate their stance. They have a very strict anti-bot policy. So for people who uh, feel one way or another out about that. Just know if you are playing with fire, you might get burned uh, because you know they they are they are tracking this stuff and they wanted to come through and make sure that people did understand that. So that's kind of where it's at. Uh, I know that this you know it wasn't this wasn't too long. Actually, it was twelve minutes long. So I guess uh, there was there was enough covered here. But I'm I'm curious to know. Like I said, I haven't been playing the game. It's something that I do actually want to get back into. Uh, and probably start streaming again soon and just hanging out with you guys to, to help me through the levels. But that is where uh, that is that's where I'm at. And I'm curious to know what did you guys get out of it? Because I, I don't feel as though my my five biggest takeaways and stuff was was fully comprehensive. I think that I kind of just picked and choose the stuff that was like making sense to me. So if there was something bigger or something that I missed, please do let me know in the comments below. But uh, that's all I got. I'll catch you all in the next video and see you around the game. Take care.